good. Guys, I've got a new laptop, so that means no more Zoom problems. <laughs> Go me. Go me. Anyway, Mikey, how are you feeling? Much, much better now. I finally broke my fever. I know everybody was so concerned, <laughs> but uh, we no, were. I'm kidding. But yeah, it, it, it finally broke. It, um, I can't believe how long it actually lasted, but I think it was a lot to do with the medicine I was taking because the medicine just knocked me out 100%. But yeah, it lasted about a week, but I'm finally like, ugh, you know, my throat's not lacerated anymore and I can, you know, stay awake. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, I'm glad to hear you better. If you weren't on last night, both Mike and I were absolutely ratchet. <laughs> So I now no longer sound like a man <laughs> and uh, we're here. Guys, if you can put your cameras on, I can see who has a camera and I can see who doesn't have it on. Now, the couple of new guys on tonight, so many new people have joined the squad in the last two weeks. Epic to see you. If you don't know who I am, I am SJ. If you don't know who Mike is, Mike is one of the co-founders of Trade House. Okay, he is... The reason we're all here let's be honest um <laughs> we've been running these calls most tuesdays we try to do most about three out of four i reckon we do a month <laughs> um since 2017 so <laughs> we've been doing this a long time i'm in bundaberg at the moment um zipping around the countryside um but guys welcome to tonight's call now just to we're gonna going to write it in the chat just so we get it right again. Last week we did very well. Blue Wolf. That is the hashtag. Okay. If you guys have any breakthroughs tonight in the chat, I want you to write hashtag Blue Wolf. And what this represents, wolf, fuckity, wolf, wolf. I agree. Um, what this represents for us in Trade House is we like to donate money to charities and the money that Blue Wolf goes to is all about the dog meat trade in Ghana and Asia. Save the paparoonies, I say, and that's what we're doing. So tonight we've got a call all about the long, I think everyone's been waiting for this call for like, what, Mike, a month? <laughs> the quarters? Probably. Call? A very long time. So this is not my jam. Um, I have a very small understanding of the quarters theory but i do have a question guys that i want to propose to you straight up in the chat okay is price movement random answer me that yes or no and it's okay if you don't know no 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 okay 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 so my understanding, and Mike, you can correct me as we go. I'm just going to open this call, guys, and can bullet straight to Mike because this is his thing. Um, my understanding is that there is a, you know, notion that price in, in the trading industry, uh, that price movement in these markets is random and chaotic. Okay, and my understanding of quarter theory is that this theory suggests that there is a clear pattern in price movement. Um, so therefore challenging the notion that price movement is random. Okay. And what quarter theory recognizes or, you know, organizes on the charts, whatever it does is the daily fluctuations of um, the currency exchange in a very orderly manner. So I've, if you've never been on one of my sessions, you need to be on them for starters on go live. Um, they basically, you know, I've read the book and great book to, to understand what the quarter theory is. Um, and it basically focuses on, you know, a thousand pip ranges between major whole numbers in currency exchange um, and then divides those ranges into four quarters called large quarters, et cetera, et cetera. So that is my, the extent of my understanding. <laughs> so guys, we're all going to learn tonight. So grab a pen and paper, listen to this content. The reason that we have Mike doing this call tonight is he is really the only trader that trades this way. And I think that's really cool. Even though he's like smart money and founder of Trade House, everyone else is, you know, trades very similarly, like me, Jenna, Rock, Siva. 
um, we all trade very much the same. And Mike is the anomaly, I suppose. And I want to know why <laughs> and fully understand. And so does everyone else. So that is what this call is for tonight. Mike, I'm going to throw it to you. Awesome. I was pulling up uh, the slides here <clears throat> to. Okay. Yeah. I have quite a few <laughs> slideshows, so um, making sure I pull up the right one. Yep, here we go. So um, for anybody that wasn't here on the last one, that recording is available, right? The one where we were like the whole time. So uh, for anybody, just I guess as a quick little um, um, recap, the entire the entire point of that session last week was to demonstrate a handful of things. And for anybody that wasn't there, you'll have to go back uh, and watch that, even though, again, like we were sick and or I was sick and uh, SJ loves roller coasters. <laughs> um, the the intention of what it was that I was demonstrating on that call is the basis of this understanding. Now, for me, I know that it has the word theory in it. Uh, to me, I don't consider it a theory. And for the ones that were here last week, was there who was here last week and who wasn't? I'm just curious. But for the ones that, again, even weren't here uh, last week, the, the point of all of these demonstrations of things was to point out pattern recognition. And that's, again, where the basis or the premise of this entire uh, approach that I have comes from, because this precedes trading for me. This is something that when I uh, finally stumbled onto it, it changed my life dramatically. And what I mean when I say that is, is that it is, you know, I, I guess for a lack of a better term, the rabbit hole. This is the rabbit hole of all rabbit holes to me. Even to this day, I still have never, still, I still have not come across anything that, again, is so vast and unbelievably important, but also revealing of a lot of things. Uh, do, does anybody in here know what the Kabbalah is? You know what that word is? If you do, awesome, but it completely transcends even that. But it is essentially the language that is used. Our alphabet, the months, the weeks, time is based off of the Gregorian calendar, which was made from Pope Gregory the 13th. The literally like whatever it's 514 a.m. March 29th, 2022. The literal fact that I can even say that comes from a mathematical structure that it was again implemented by the people that, of course, are in control of this world. And the alphabet that we use, this language, the 26 letter alphabet was actually a 19 letter alphabet. They added letters. Uh, August, for example, is from Caesar Augustus from the Roman Empire. Like they literally added a month in his name. That's like, you know, first of all, again, me just setting the stage on this conversation, uh, like kind of adding on from last week as well. But uh, even from the Hebrew language, every single language that has ever been made uh, all the way back to even Sanskrit was based off of math or for a better term, I guess, numbers everything in our physical reality, and I mean quite literally everything, is boiled down to numbers. Last week, I gave uh, a couple of examples of how, again, everything that human beings care about is numbers, whether you have realized it or not. But your age, your height, your weight, 
your phone number, your bank account, your bank account number, the number in your bank account, how many pushups you can do, how many miles per hour, or I guess kilometers per hour you were going, or your high score, or how many pushups you can do, or uh, how many hours of sleep you got, or how many hours you've been doing something, blah, 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 blah. Everything is a number. But the reason and the importance behind that is, again, just remember, guys, I'm just setting the precedent before it again even gets set into the charts, which is also, again, what I was doing last week. But my my intention behind that is to, again, predicate, I guess, my I, I don't really want to use the word faith, but uh, my my obedience to it. Uh, I, I don't, I, I can't really think of like a better word to it, but the abidance of this undenying truth. And what that is, is that again, whether we're talking about, you know, something, for example, have you guys ever walked into a room and you immediately picked up on the energy of the room? Everybody was mad. Everybody was happy. No one's acknowledged you or anything, but it's like the gravity or the weight of the room is different. What that is, you know, instead of using the word energy is a frequency. Everything in this physical reality is vibrating. When I can hit my desk like this, it's not actually solid. It is vibrating at a particular frequency to where my hand cannot physically go through it. There is nothing in this third dimensional reality that is actually solid. Everything is vibrating everything or, you know, and I don't mean that like in the cliched word or whatever, but everything again, can be measured in again, a tone or a frequency or whatever the case, the light spectrum. Uh, again, another thing that I showed where you have X-rays or gamma rays or uh, radio waves, Wi-Fi, like you have Wi-Fi, right? Where you are right now, you cannot literally visually see it, but it is there. Wi-Fi is also a frequency. Your cell phone's service is also a frequency. Everybody knows about 5G, right? That was like where all that came from. My point being is that when I really started to learn more about that in particular, it changed everything for me in the sense that things started stopped becoming so much about good versus evil. Like, uh, by the way, I'm talking like 2011, 2012, 2013, me, just to be clear on this part. But uh, popular terms like the Illuminati or devil worshipers or blah, 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 right? I had always made that, that, infraction of you know again good versus evil uh and and as that all worked but then when i really started to dive into this particular understanding what i came to realize was that those people that are in control of the world that we live in this is what they use this is how they communicate. This is how things are done. This is how everything works because the people that are in control are not stupid, ignorant, dumbass people. These are very, very, very intelligent people that didn't have to go through the same programming that I or you, for example, had to go through and then inevitably had to unlearn to relearn. Imagine just learning the secrets of the universe from a very, very early age and operating from there. That's the level of difficulty, so to speak, of, you know, what it is that we're talking about here. I learned trash and lies versus, again, other people in this world and who they are doesn't matter. Like the power families, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't care about the conspiracy theories or, it, you know, any of that. The fact is, is that regardless of whoever they are, this is what they use. Everybody, uh, like I know a lot of you guys, like everybody here is familiar with uh, Super Bowls, right? So, for example, mainstream sports in, well, the world, but even particularly in the United States, are, are scripted. Do, do you guys have a WWE? Is, did WWE play there? 
do you like do you guys know what the wwe is or the uh wcf or in anyways it's wrestling fake scripted wrestling but i remember even being as a kid where i again like Loved it. I had toys. I had like a little toy wrestling arena. I had the video games, blah, blah, blah. But there was a point where I realized that it's not actually a sport. It's a TV show. It's for entertainment. There is a script. The winners and losers and what happens in all of that is scripted. But I remember coming to that conclusion and, and realizing like, oh, and my um you know i was really young um i don't even know probably like uh 10 or 11 12 13 i don't exactly remember when i found out that again it was all a script but when i did find that out it like wrecked me like as a kid because i i was so emotionally invested into it like i loved it Imagine that, and this might not apply to, you know, everybody like out in Australia, but like out here in the United States, if I were to prove to people that the NFL is the exact epitome and the NBA and uh, baseball and MLB and soccer, the World Cup, the Olympics is just like the, the, the WWE. And the, how all of that is done is through numbers. As crazy as it seems. Like, and uh, I don't know. Is there anybody here from America? Who do you like just as a random, not random, but um, who do you guys think controls the games? Even uh, what's the what's the biggest sport in Australia? Rugby, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's rugby. Who controls the game of rugby? Who controls the game of basketball? Who controls uh, football? Like, I'm not talking about like from some, you know, vague person. They're on the field. They're on the court. I'll give you a hint. They wear black and white. (laughs) Mason colors, I know. The refs. The refs. The umpires. The referees can absolutely control what happens in a game. Now, I could demonstrate and prove that even more and more, but of course, that's not what this is about right now. My point is just to demonstrate again that Las Vegas and, yeah, the sports betting and there's an industry. There is an entire industry that surrounds all of that. And that, for example, uh, I don't know if you guys... Uh, happen to know the teams or whatever, but when the Seahawks and the Broncos were going back and forth with the Super Bowls, uh, that's Russell Wilson and Peyton Manning. It doesn't matter if you guys know them or not. It was like 20, uh, 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 14, 15, 16, I think. I knew who was going to win the Super Bowl months before it happened to the stat lights. Not just like, oh, somebody happened to say, oh, this team was going to win, but the score, how many, you know, how many touchdowns or, you know, scores or whatever was going to be happening. Like, it is unbelievable what I, again, discovered with that. My point of saying all of this again, and also, again, the continuation of, uh, you know, last week's conversation is that what everybody calls quarter theory is the implementation of that in trading. I do not consider this a theory. I consider this a foundational understanding for charts. But I want to be clear on a couple of things because, you know, SJ has, of course, uh, you know, and this is also something I've known, not just from you guys, but from everybody. is that a lot of people are confused uh, about what, you know, my approach and the way I talk about the charts and things like that. First of all, that is completely understandable because people do not come from the same experience that I come from. 
and have done the research and again, the things that I have seen to bring me to this point. I did not know about, again, quarters until later into my trading career. But I want everybody to, first of all, understand is that smart money and institutional order flow and where uh, liquidity is sitting at, where mitigations and imbalances and where structure happens is something that I do use. But when it comes to go live, for example, I am considered the introduction. I take that opportunity to, again, talk about, I call it the grid. I don't really call it quarters because, first of all, not everybody in the world knows what quarters means because not everybody uses uh, that metric system. But the grid is where things happen. So what I'm saying is when I'm looking at a chart, just like this right here on USDJPY, I could just as much get rid of the candlesticks like this, right? And that still would not change the fact of all of these price levels still being relevant. See, when we talk about technical analysis or even, again, for example, institutional order flow or smart money, what that or and it's not just that support resistances, supply and demand divergences, uh, gaps or equal highs or equal lows or whatever. All of that information is comprised off of everything to the left, meaning whatever has happened, you know, last week, yet the day before, last month, last year, whatever creates, um, again, where uh, certain things are happening, right? That's where you get an uptrend or a downtrend or an imbalance or a mitigation or those kinds of things. Y'all understand what I'm saying? But before any of that, again, taking literally the candlesticks off the chart, the grid exists. These price levels on USDJPY, for example, are still relevant. 115 is a relevant price on USDJPY because it is 115. Not because of what has happened there by looking at price action in the past and saying, oh, okay, there's this, 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 and this, and this. Therefore, 115 is now a relevant price. 115, as just an example, is a relevant price because of it literally being 115. Does everybody at least understand what I'm saying right there? And if you don't, Go into the chat, tell me. I need to know because that is so important to understand before we start plugging in where an imbalance is, where a gap in the market exists, where an uptrend, or if it's an uptrend or a downtrend, or whatever, of course, uh, you know, we could say about whatever, uh, you know. In, in the, in, you know, on the chart. Uh, why is it 115? Don't know at all, Mike. Okay, so good. If you, if the, like, I don't care if we spend the rest of the session talking about this little point, guys, this is exactly why we are here. 115 for an example, but again, just to be clear, it's not just 116. 115.50, 116.50, 116.50, all of these prices are relevant. And this is why I was looking for uh, my slides, because I will at least put up some information here. So at least you guys can either take pictures or, um, you know, write it down or whatever. So after all of those examples, uh, um. This, like all of these other examples that are on this slideshow, like, uh, again, this is just now jumping straight into uh, quarters. Numbers and math cannot be argued with. Therefore, the prices of the market, aka those horizontal lines, the numbers we identify hold value. 
they are not a bias or an opinion of mine. Like, for example, what I was just talking about, 115 is not relevant because I like 115. 115 is relevant because of the physical number structured grid, as you will see. If you still don't understand, uh, you know, again, we're, there's more slides here. What happens at those prices is what is debatable or a bias or an opinion. But the grid, the quarters or the grid is what I'm starting from. And to be clear for anybody, quarters, I know not everybody uses it, but four quarters is a whole. Two halves is a whole. Three thirds or, uh, you know, dividing it down into fractions. That's what quarters are. So uh, price and time, again, are the things that I personally use amongst uh, all other things before I look at the structure, before I look at, again, where things are happening in the market, why uh, there could be an imbalance, why, be, uh, again, literally before anything else, the price and the time are the number one and number two most important things to me. All other sources of information come second to these two because why? Both of them, price and time, are numbers. I don't mean that to be cliche, but so the first breakdown here is with price. Price is constant on any chart, like whatever the price of the market is at, you know, right now. Price is constantly, this is what the, the I put in finger quotes, theory is suggesting is that the price is fluctuating from one LQP or large quarter point from one to the other, depending on the trend. In between the large quarter points is, or, uh, you know, a better word, the majors, you have the minors. Think about a piano, right? You have the white keys and you have the black keys. Do you guys know what the difference is? between the white keys and the black keys. One's the majors and one's the minors. Same thing with the charts. And so what is known as also the minor levels is also again where I find my opportunities. The whole minors and half levels are where I look to trade on an intraday approach because the large quarter points are like this. They are 250 pips apart. So, for example, what you see here on the chart at the bottom, you see, and this is USDJPY on the daily, uh, what is the bottom purple line? 100, okay? And then this one right here in the middle is 110, and then the one up at the very top is 120. These are what are known on USDJPY specifically, even though, again, it is not just on USDJPY. It is on every single chart possible. Stocks, options, crypto, commodities, futures, binary, Forex. It does not matter. If it is on a chart, it is on a grid. Every grid is, of course, different because of, you know, like uh, the, the prices, right? Like, these are not, these are the prices for USDJPY, right? This is not the same for AUDJPY or the US 30 or anything else. They all have their own major large quarter points or large quarter points. I just have to jump onto the chart and I could show you. But using USDJPY as an example here, why is 100, 110, and 120 major? large quarter points, as opposed to all of these other purple lines that you see that just have the letters LQP. All of the other ones are large quarter points, but those three, 100, 110, and 120, they are the majors. 100, 110, and 120 are more relevant than any of these other prices and what this is, a 2,000 pip range. Why? Well, before I even really get to that answer, I always like to use this answer, not because they are whole numbers. 115, 105, 
is also whole numbers as well. Why is it in it? In, and everybody stop thinking about charts and trading for a second for this particular question. Why is it when a nine-year-old becomes a 10-year-old, that is more relevant than when, let's say, an 11-year-old becomes a 12-year-old? Or when a 49-year-old becomes a 50-year-old? Or when, versus again, when a, I don't know, a 47-year-old becomes a 48-year-old? Why is it more relevant to the human race when we are in the year 2019 and go into the year of 2020 as opposed to 2017 or 2018? Why is it relevant that we are in the, when we were in the year 2009 and go into the year 2010. See, we gauge things as human beings off of what is known as the decimal system or the base 10 number system. The 10s, the 20s, the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. What are we in right now? The 20s, right? We don't say the 65s, the 75s, the 85s, or the 95s. We say the 60s or the 70s or the 80s or the 90s. Does everybody understand what I'm saying there? And if you don't, please go into the chat and let me know. But we as human beings favor that simplicity because we did not create math. We did not create numbers. We discovered them. And so when it comes to anything that involves human beings, we care more about 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, as opposed to, for example, 5, 15, 25, 35, or 7, 17, 27, 37, 47, or, you know, 3, 13, 23, 33. Do you guys see what I'm saying? The base 10 number system, which or, or the decimal system, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that's the base 10 numbers, 0, 1 through 9, is what we use as a foundational principle for life. Again, you're how old are you right now? If you're 25, you don't say you're, you, well, I mean, I guess. Obviously, yes, you could also answer 25, but most people will say, I'm in my 20s. Or if you're 33, I'm in my 30s. If you're 47, you're in your 40s. Do you see what I'm saying, guys? And if you don't, please go into this chat and tell me. But does everybody at least understand that right there? Because it's important. It is, it is important to, again, understand what it, it get again, why us as human beings, we care about that. We care about right now, we're in the year 2022, right? Of course. But in 10 years from now, we will not say 2022. We will say the 20s. Four years ago, five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, you would have said, or today, you will say the teens. You see what I'm saying? That principle, that ideology goes a lot further than just, again, it being, you know, oh, the 20s and the 30s, or again, when you're uh, and in terms of age, uh, in your 20s or 30s or whatever, that psychological understanding applies to everything that we are as human beings. By extension, how or why would the markets that we created be any different? More importantly, why would the algorithms that literally conduct this market? Remember when SJ asked the first question, does anything in here happen by random? Is price action random? No, it is not. Why? Because by definition, guys, these markets are not being operated by human beings 
literally right now at this very moment uh, by people uh, behind computer screens. What do we use? Algorithms. Algorithm is just another word for a mathematical formula or a number formula that this, the charts, the markets are abiding by. Just like a video game. Call of Duty is an algorithm. Minecraft is an algorithm. Fortnite is an algorithm. If you play Call of Duty, for example, you are not going to get onto Call of Duty and expect to play Minecraft, right? Because they are a completely different set of algorithms and formulas and things that quite literally make that game. Just as much so, the markets, UJ, gold, uh, US 30, Bitcoin, orange juice futures, it does not matter what we are talking about. If it is a chart, and it is a chart that people can actively trade, these markets are, by definition, being controlled by algorithms. And so since it is being controlled by algorithms, it what does that mean? Go into the chat. Isn't price move by people buying and selling? Not us. Me or you do not have the ability to do that, except for if you guys have heard of like pump and dumps of the crypto space, right? The shit coins. It is because, yes, certain people, uh, usually the developers of a coin, of a, of a coin that's just more or less a scam, they create that crypto project, they hold most of it, then allow it to go public, then they dump everything, dumping the price after everybody has bought in, making the people that are pulling the rug out, which is the term that's usually associated with that, those people that pull the rug out are the ones that make all of the money and everybody that bought into the coins are um, you know, the ones that have to obviously take a, a, a massive financial loss. But when it comes to especially the world markets like Forex, for example, or the stock market or the commodities market or futures or binary or even the crypto markets like the bigger ones like Bitcoin and Ethereum or Ripple and those things, they are not driven by me or you. I know that that is, you know, a lot of people think that, yes, people are the ones that drive market price. That is demonstrably not true. It is not how this works. What drives, it's one word, what makes a market go up or down, guys? One word. <clears throat> yeah, the meme coins. House always wins, that's true. No, not the bank. Not, not demand, not algorithm. It starts with an L. There it is. Liquidity. Liquidity is what drives market price. To make this market, to make USDJPY, or again, whatever chart it is that we're looking at, liquidity is what matters. That's the only thing that matters. Well, take Forex, for example. Trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars are moving every day. Every single, right now, at this very moment, Billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars are just moving, just moving. We do not do that. Me, you, even if all of us were to be like a single unit and trade uh, something, we would not be able to control market price. It's just not how it works. I... I didn't play the audio because I'm playing music. I always play music, but I will play you guys a little video that I always like to play about that particular um, uh, thing. Do you guys remember GameStop 
and everything about GameStop and uh, uh, what you call um, uh, Fidelity and uh, what was the other one? Um, Fidelity and oh my lord, I can't. Uh, I can't, I don't even know if you guys have Fidelity. Oh, it's um, TD, uh, Ameritrade, uh, TD, yeah, like TD Ameritrade. Uh, d wait, first of all, do you guys even know about GameStop? For anybody that's new, uh, do you guys know anything? If, if there isn't anybody that knows about this, then again, you might not understand uh, why I'm bringing this up. Uh, GameStop, uh, Wait, first of all, do you guys even have GameStop in Australia? I don't even know. Uh, GameStop is just a company. And, and what happened, or again, what I'm about to play for you is a news article, or, or not an article, but a news story that came about uh, this. Actually, in fact, I'll just let it play uh, because it'll be easier to explain once they explain uh, a little bit. But at the very end is why I save this video and why I play this video. Watch this. Another roller coaster day for GameStop. The stock dropped a whopping 44% as small online investors ran into a roadblock in their trading war with Wall Street short sellers. Basically, big investors were trying to make money by betting the stock price would drop. If it rose, they would take a loss. KPI X5's Wilson Walker reports new at 6 o'clock. That's when an army of small investors assembled on social media and went into battle. If you have been following or trying to untangle this story, you know GameStop is not really driving the story. It is more of an accidental passenger in a larger story, and that is individual investors taking on hedge funds and rattling Wall Street. The people put their money in, and Wall Street lost the bet, and they need to pay. Yeah. Protesters gathered outside the offices of Robin Hood Markets in Menlo Park. Robin Hood, Robin that was the one is I was a trying to think of. trading app that lets people buy and sell stocks without a broker. It is also how an army do you guys of have Robin Hood users upended the hedge in Australia? I don't know if you do. Sell struggling GameStop. Those Redditors started buying. They sent the stock price soaring. And that cost a couple of Wall Street hedge funds about $5 billion. At that point, five billion. Remember that trading GameStop specifically. They are changing the rules. They lost their bet. They need to pay, and the people are because this is people's money. It's interesting, isn't it? Um, I understand that the administration is. Oh, she's a, a wonderful All blood drinker. This, from the short squeeze to the trading restrictions, has grabbed the attention of lawmakers in Washington, the New York Attorney General, and anybody who pays attention to the stock market. Yeah, I covered it with my PhD students this morning. It's amazing. It's Stanford after this guy. Darryl after Duffy, this guy uh, paid. Teaches us that things have changed, that we're in a world in which uh, a fringe set of investors, possibly a large number of them, really like to cause havoc for hedge funds, especially those that are shorting uh, firms. But I think this will calm down after a point and, and maybe a change in regulation will be called for or some investigation but the anti wall street sentiment that drove this all right the guy that's about to talk um i'm going i'm going i'm going to let him play it all the way through but before i do listen to every word he says that is not going away the people that were uh, putting stuff on reddit they outsmarted robin hood and and the stock market and I think that's the bigger picture is that Robin Hood and, the, and, and, and Wall Street, they're very upset because they got fooled. Outsmarted Robin, they outsmarted Robin Hood and, and the stock market. On Reddit, the people that were uh, putting stuff on Reddit, they outsmarted Robin Hood and, and the stock market. Did you hear what he just said? They outsmarted Robin Hood and the stock market. First of all, the stock market is not a person. The stock market is not an entity that can be outsmarted. My point is that our friend Derek here has literally no idea what he's talking about. These people that are standing out in front of a Robin Hood-owned building, 
which by the way, Robinhood is a thing that you can passively put your money into. It's an app and that Robinhood will do the investing for you. That's what Robinhood is for anybody that doesn't know. But my reason for playing this video, one more time for the memes. But the anti-Wall Street sentiment that drove this. These people are standing outside in the rain, standing out in front of a building of that Robin Hood owns in Silicon Valley, California. Their signs are getting rained on and they're all wearing masks outside screaming at random people that just happen to be driving by. That is not going away. The people that were uh, putting stuff on Reddit, they outsmarted Robin Hood and, and the stock market. And I think that's the bigger picture is that Robin Hood and, the, and, and, and Wall Street, they're very upset because they got fooled. Do you guys honestly think that even taking what he says at face value, do you guys realize how much $5 billion isn't anything when it comes to Wall Street? $5 billion gets moved around in less than 10 minutes. $5 billion is nothing. Now, my point of playing that video, and hold on, because got to cut the music back on for me. I always have music on. Don't think that I'm not, a, you know, giving you guys my attention or everything. I always usually have music on when I can. Uh, do you guys honestly think that $5 billion is it? <laughs> the funnier thing about that particular thing, do you guys know what Reddit is? Could you imagine actually massively getting everybody together on Reddit and everybody shorting GameStop stock? Do you know how hard it would be for me right now to tell every single person that is here to short or buy something? Do you know how much trouble, like not, not like uh, legal trouble, like, but how hard it would actually be for me to get all of you guys to do something in, in synchronicity. Reddit is the cesspool of the internet. And the story, as you guys heard, was that a quote unquote army of Reddit users, Reddit users, all shorted GameStop stock simultaneously, and that Robin Hood, or AKA, you know, just like what our friend Derek on the side of the street wearing a mask in the middle of the rain said, uh, Wall Street didn't want to pay because everybody shorted. GameStop stock. Can you understand how unbelievably ridiculous that sounds? I mean, I don't, I don't know if it, if it is, it's laughable. It's like literally a meme. That's why I played that video to people, especially around this conversation with liquidity. And again, understanding the narrative of things, because whatever it is that people get into a little fuss about, <laughs> off they go they'll go to walmart or whatever store and go you know buy a big little poster board get their markers and say you know robin hood owes us money then they will go stand outside in the rain with a megaphone and go yell and scream at random people that happen to be driving by and the irony is that they think that they are actually doing something first of all if any of that was even true in the first place, $5 billion is nothing. It's nothing. How much does Forex move a day, guys? Trillions, trillions of dollars daily. Billions is nothing. My point is, is that we have been convinced that we are the ones that move these markets. No, we don't. Not at all. We do not have the liquidity or the ability to do anything in these markets because we simply do not have enough to match 
what it is that all of these, you know, institutions, the central bank, uh, if you even want to say the word Wall Street, whatever, of course, that means people don't even know what that even means. But my point is, is that none of that is, again, what is actually going on. What is really going on, especially when we're talking now, let's all come back into trading. Uh, that was all fun for the memes and stuff, even though, again, it's not for the memes. I show that video because of how absolutely ridiculous and ludicrous the masses are, so to speak. But anyways, pulling it all back into trading and things. 100 and coming back to the slideshow here, 100, 110, and 120 are considered major points in the market because of quite simply the prices that they are, that they are not what has happened at these prices, but the literal fact that it is 110. As an example, uh, just to, you know, maybe hopefully make it a little bit better, here is AUD JPY. This price level 90, 90 is a major large quarter point on AUD JPY. Why? Because what is above this purple line on AUD JPY? The 90s. This is the 90s. What's below this purple line on AUD JPY? The 80s. On AUD USD, right now we're at 7,500, but that's not a major, right? Because right now we're just talking about the majors. Here is a major large quarter point on AUD USD, 0. 0.7000, 70, right? What is above 70? The 70s. Right now, like what we're trading at, at 7,500. What is below this purple line? You guys tell me. The 60s, yes, on gold. Right now, we are, uh, you know, at almost at 1900. Okay. So, 1900 is a major large quarter on gold. Why? What exists above this purple line? The 1900s down here, the 1800s. The very fact that that's there. The very, the, I mean, literally, the price itself, not what has happened, not what has happened in the past, not what, um, you know, equal highs or this or that or whatever with, again, the candles that have happened to the left or in the past, that is not what defines 1900. 1900 is relevant because it is simply 1900. I can do this. Excuse me. I can do this on any chart. It doesn't matter what I'm looking at. I can jump over to the US 30 and do the same thing. I have the, uh, the it, like these purple lines right here. I have the purple lines as the quarter, the large quarter points, right? The purple lines on my charts, when you guys look at them, they are the more important. What are the blue lines? Because yes, they are color coordinated. The blue lines are whole levels. For example, 91, 92, 89, 88, and so on and so on, right? The green lines, 90, 50, 9150, 8950, 8850, 8750 is a half level, but it is also a large quarter point. And, and coming back to the slide here now, <clears throat> when you were looking at a thousand pip range from starting from the bottom, 100 being the major large quarter point. Remember, what's above 100? The, you know, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, right? What's below that purple line 100? The 90s, 
99, 98, 97, 96, blah, blah, blah. So when you have the thousand pip range, because we're going from 100.000 on UJ up to 110, how many pips is that, of course, guys? A thousand. This is where quarters come in. We are dividing it by four equal holes. What's the thousand divided by four? 250. So what's, the, what's 250 pips up above 100? 10250. What's 250 pips up above that? 105. 250 pips up above that? 10750. Then you get to 110. Do it again. 11250, 115, 11750, 120, 12250, 125, 12750. And on and on and on it goes. Just to be clear, show you more examples. AJ. Uh, okay, so starting from uh, 80, right here, right? 80. Then 250 pips up above that, 8250. 250 pips up above that, 8500. Then you have 8750. Then you're at the next major large quarter point, which is 90. 250 pips up above that, 9250. More again, 95, 9750. Then you're at 100. Again, AU, 70, 7250, 75, 7750, 80, 8250, uh, 85, 8750, 90. Do you guys see what I'm saying? It's just a grid. It doesn't matter what we are looking at, those are the majors. But I want, to, I want to make sure, if you guys don't understand that, go into the chat and let me know. <clears throat> can I show you uh, sample entries? Yes, I can. And by the way, always remember, because I know that we are, I'm spending a lot of time doing this, but that's kind of the reason why there's always so many questions about it is because there's a lot to explain with this. Now, um, here is uh, more of that. This is USD JPY and 110 is at the top. And then this purple line at the very, very bottom is uh, 105. But within a 500 pip range, which is again, 105 to 110, Major large quarter point, which is again 110, then the large quarter point, which is 10750, then you have the HL, which are the half levels, and then you have the uh, whole levels, which are WLs. Now, the um, just to again show you 100, or I'm sorry, 105, 10550, 106, 10650, 107, 10750. 108, 108, 50, 109, 109, 50, and 110. These are, yes, 50 pips apart. Now, if you've read the book of quarter theory, which I do recommend that you guys do, it's a very hard read because it is a very dry book, but uh, well, throat starting to act up a little bit. I'm sorry. But also the whole level and the half levels, as you guys can see, and even when you guys look at my charts, yes, they are uh, 50 pips apart. Even on top of that, there's even the 25, which is, again, the quarters, not just taking it from the 1,000 pip ranges from, like, again, 100 to 110. There's even the 100 pip ranges from, for example, 105, which is this bottom, or let's just use 110 since you can see this, 110, there is also 109.75, 20 pips, 25 pips below that, you have 109.50, 25 pips below that, you have 109.25, then 25 pips below that, you have 109, 25 pips below that, you have 108.75, then 108.50, then 108.25, then 108. I just don't have visually on my charts personally, every 25 pips uh, visually drawn out. 
because it would quite literally double the amount of lines on my screen. And there is already a horrendous amount. <laughs> and I'm sorry. And I know it just looks ridiculous, especially for people that are, you know, new to this and all of that. Like my charts look daunting because there is, again, so many horizontal lines, which is, again, why I personally don't have the what's known as actually the hesitation levels, which is the 25 pip levels. But that, again, is answered more so in the book. But again, even the minor levels like that, again, and like the distance between 109.50, for example, and 110, half of that, obviously, 50 pips divided by two, 25 pips, that would be 109.75. Those are known as uh, hesitation zones. But again, that is, you know, further, you know, into this conversation. I just don't, again, visually have them there. Now, I won't spend too much more time on this part, but again, time is always something that, again, a lot of people have questions about because people think that, again, time is something that, again, I just say, oh, what time is it? No, what time of the day is it? What hour of the day? What minute of the hour? What hour of the four hour? Like right now, without looking, guys, without looking, it is 6.06 a.m. for me. Whatever, I don't know what time it is for you guys. Right now, there's a four-hour candle printing, right? For all of us. Without looking, do you know which hour of the four-hour candle that is currently printing right now at this very moment? Remember, there's one, two, three, four-hour candles in a four-hour candle, right? So which hour are we currently on right now and if you don't understand the significance of that have you guys ever seen a candle that started for example very 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 bullish but by the time that candle closes it don't i don't care what time frame it's on it is absolutely 100 in the opposite direction it started very, very, very bullish, but by the time it closed, uh, it was, again, 100% in the opposite direction. So wouldn't you, again, agree when we are talking about a four-hour candle or the four-hour chart, when we are looking at the current four-hour candle that is currently printing, wouldn't the last hour of a four-hour candle, meaning the fourth hour, be more relevant than, let's say, the second hour of a four-hour candle? Because the first two hours can be spent going in one direction, but then by the time that four-hour candle closes, or daily, or monthly, or weekly, or whatever, even one minute, five minute, 50, what, it doesn't matter. That again, the open of the candle can tell a story as opposed to the close. This is time. This is just an example. And yes, by the way, we are on the second hour of the current four-hour candle printing. Does anybody know which four-hour candle out of all of the four-hour candles that print in the day, which number in all of the four-hour candles that print on a daily basis, again, first of all, how many is that? How many four-hour can, four candles print in a day? With that, which four-hour candle is currently printing? This is just, again, a little pop quiz that I always like to give to people because it's just, again, an example of, again, your understanding of when you're getting into the market, why you're getting into the market, what time, what session is open, what minute, what hour, what is, do you see what I'm saying? That it's not just, oh, what time of the day is it, LOL, and off we go. There is a lot more that goes into the breakdown of time. 
So this right here, candle two is Tokyo. Candle 10 is Frankfurt. Candle 11 is London. Candle 16 is New York. And candle 24 is Sydney. This is how Forex is open 24 hours a day because the stock exchange is just right on top of one another, right? So if you don't know, take a screenshot of this, take a picture, whatever, but candle two, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, we are all currently on the same candle, regardless of wherever you are. I can't say my 6 a.m. candle because my 6 a.m. candle is only relevant to the people that are in my time zone. But what I can say is the number candle on the hourly chart, by the way, of uh, you know, one through 24. That's what the session breaks are, the, you know, the start of the day, the end of the day. Uh, the session breaks start in, in the day, right? And so candle two is Tokyo. Candle 10 is Frankfurt, Germany, which technically opens Europe. The next hour is the London, London session, right? Candle 16 is New York. And then candle 24 is uh, obviously Sydney. And that's how that all works. If you don't know when the stock exchange is open, do you guys know? Uh, like, I don't know if you guys have been trading long enough, but there are literal strategies completely comprised of when particular stock exchanges open, obviously focusing mostly on London and New York. The London breakout strategy is completely based off of uh, the London open candle. The New York strategy, the New York open candle strategy, same exact thing. Uh, whenever I, I don't know, you know, I, obviously I'm sure a lot of us are in different time zones, but whenever London opens up, have you guys noticed that the London candle is always something uh, that can absolutely, you know, uh, set the tone, so to speak, for the entire day? the first hour of London has the potential to do it. So if you don't even know when the London or New York, or in fact, any of the stock, the major stock exchanges open, then it's all just vague. It's all just random. You don't know why, you know, things are happening. So to finally kind of capitulate price and time all together, do you guys happen to notice anything with this chart? Anybody want to take a guess? What do you see? Do you happen to see anything with the naked eye? Do you happen to notice that there is a pattern? There is something, there is very, very, very relevant information right in front of you but you don't know what it is, do you? You want to take a guess? Go into the chat. Take a guess for me. Uh, I see candles which have really high and low points at regular intervals. What do you mean regular intervals? The volatility on London Open and NYC Open. So you can identify, by the way, this is AUDUSD on the hourly. Uh, uh, Faz, Fa I'm, I'm sure I'm saying your name wrong. Sorry. Uh, you can see where the London and the New York candle opens are just by looking at this naked chart. You can, you, you can see, I'm, I, maybe you can, I don't know. I'm asking, like, can you see literally the London open candle or the New York open candle just by this price revisiting the same areas? What else do you mean? That's dope, Faz, because I'm, I'm certainly not saying you can't or anything. Now, let me show you. So as an example, if you guys ever look at my charts, you will see all those little blue circles. What those blue circles are, are uh, the trade house session. Like when I go live, when I go live on go live, uh, my 11 p.m. through midnight. Now, from the start of August 5th, 2019 to the end of 
uh, August 21st, 2019, which is when uh, this, this screenshot right here was taken. Now, do you guys see anything different? I pronounced your name right. That is so rare for me. I don't ever get names right, but that is dope. But for all of you guys that are here now, this is what it looked like. Now, do you see anything? Those prices all fall within the same range. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. But more importantly, take one extra step. Take one extra step. There's another thing specifically in this black shaded rectangle area. What do you see in here? In this shaded area. Because you got, you're, you're halfway, I'll say you're halfway there. It sells off. Yeah, that's true. It lines up with a quarter. Uh, no, because the quarter would be down here at 67.50. If it, it's above, it sells. If it's below, it runs. <laughs> Mine's thinking quarters, right? <laughs> Liquidity, no. Well, yeah, uh, but those blue circles, do you guys see those blue circles? All of you guys see those little blue circles in that uh, black shaded area? Those blue circles, whenever you come into my session or... Uh, you know, whatever, if you're looking at my chart like this or whatever, I highlight the trade house session, my session on go live in those blue circles. So what you're looking at is exactly what I always try to make sure that people understand. Do not overcomplicate trading, guys. The market in those blue circles in that highlighted shaded area is at the same price at the same times over and over and over and over and over. Do you see it? Those blue little ovals are representing my 11 to midnight candles. That would be candle eight and candle nine. So what you're looking at is the blue circles highlighting on a day-by-day -day basis because these session breaks are, again, day-by-day. -day. They are showing that the market, this is AUDUSD, but to be clear, guys, I'm not just showing it on AUDUSD. It is everywhere on every chart that this is quite literally the algorithm or the mathematical symmetry that I'm trying to demonstrate to you. The market, AUDUSD, you know, the thing that we not, well, not necessarily AUDUSD for everyone, but as a demonstration, these markets that me and you and all of us in here are looking for patterns, the same things to be happening over and over, right? You want to recognize patterns so that in the future, when that pattern starts to occur, you can take advantage of it, right? What I'm showing you is a literal visual representation of something extremely simple. This market right here, AU, and it's, again, do not think that this is only on AUDUSD. It is everywhere that the market is going to this same place 
at the same time over and over and over and over. Imagine leveraging that information. You think that that's only specific there? How about we go to uh, gold? Let me just get rid of the candles to get rid of a lot of the noise. Do you see all these little blue circles? I could do this all day. Same time, same price, over and over and over. This is gold. You want me to do it on another chart? I could. I could do this all day. It doesn't matter. Why? Because the market is not random. It is because, again, it is deliberately moving in a very specific way. It is moving because this is, again, how the algorithms work. You see, when I don't have these little blue circles up or, again, these little shaded areas for you, you see how easy it is to spot it here. Not so easy for the naked eye here, doesn't it? You can't really see it. Then you just apply. Like this is not rocket science, guys. This is just literally me highlighting candle 10 and candle 11. Or I'm sorry, candle 8 and candle 9. Every day. That's all the blue circles are. It does not matter what time frame, what chart I'm looking at, none of that. This is to demonstrate that the market is doing things at the same time over and over and over and over. You, me, all of us are trying to leverage pattern recognition and to, again, understand what the market is doing. It's not so easy when you're looking at it like that, right? That's the before this is what it looks like after. Just as that's just an example. I could do this all day. I can you can find this everywhere. Not not to say, of course, like obviously, look, you know, when the market is obviously moving like this, it's not going to line up, right? Because every day there's a new high, right? Every day it's going up. My point is, is that when you start to understand the way market structure and liquidity works, then you start to see, okay, so if I were to get rid of the candles here on AUD JPY, look at how many days it's spent right here from 83 to 82.50. Just right here. I, I barely even had to scroll back here. I'll scroll back even further here. Oh, look, you know, wow, what a surprise. More days at the same price. Here, let's go even further back. Oh, wow, look. Wow, isn't that insane, right? Same time, same price. Remember, these blue circles are highlighting the same candles. Oh, wow, look. Wow, how crazy. You see what I'm saying? It, like, all day. This It just happens all day. This is what I consider to be a foundational structure to understanding the charts. On top of your guys' smart money and institutional order flow, on top of everything that you guys understand, this to me is what I consider to be uh, very important. And hopefully, again, and by the way, next week, we can continue this. I know uh, we're, I'm already way, 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 way over time. Next week, I will show you price action examples. I, I mean, all day, all day.
It does not, it does not matter. But in order for me to again show you guys all of this information, it's again, I have to demonstrate it to you guys. Before I just show it on the charts and just you, I hope you guys understand why I'm spending this time showing you all of that. It's because that's what creates my belief system over this. That's what creates my approach to this. I know that this has taken a while, guys, and I'm, you know, I guess for lack of a better term, I'm sorry about that. But it takes a while for me to genuinely, literally demonstrate point after point after point of how these markets operate and why I do the things that I do. It's not that I'm going against, you know, market structure or again, smart money or all of that. I use all of that. But everybody seems to think that trading is so like heart surgery and just that it's so complicated. I don't know if this, this isn't meant to frustrate anybody in here, but guys, I have deliberately made this stupid simple, not for y'all, for me. I don't want trading to be ridiculously hard. What I'm showing you guys is just, it, it's, it's like clockwork. Happens all the time. And so by, again, leveraging that information, by leveraging the understanding of, again, why the markets are moving to, you know, again, particular places, you start to understand liquidity a lot more and why a mitigation will happen here. Why the structure is bullish or bearish. Why things are happening that's my point with it so i know we're way 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 over time so sj i think that that's a good stopping point i'll go ahead and hand it back to you but next week guys again we will continue this conversation please don't think that if you guys if you guys do not ask questions nothing gets solved do not think that you are bothering me or that it is a problem if you do not understand something it makes these calls redundant if you do not say anything. Mm -hmm. The literal point is for you. So I, I don't care if we spend an entire session on one thing. Because if that one thing is solved, then that makes it worth it. Because the next week we can move on to the next thing. And even if we spend the next that session, the session after that, the session after that, whatever, hammering down a specific point, that's the point. It is not just, oh, let's all get on a call because raw, raw or whatever. It is, again, to try to push this understanding. Whether you agree with it, use it or not, that's, that's up to you. I really hope that even like next week, guys, I will show you with the replay function on TradingView you know, more of this. I, I will do this for the next 15 sessions. I don't care. If that's what it takes, then that's what it takes. Guys, I love you all so much. SJ, I'll go ahead and hand it back to you. Guys, thank you so much. Give it up in the chat for Mike. Now, I did only see three blue wolves. Pretty sure you guys had a lot more fucking blue wolf moments. So give me some blue wolves right now. Uh, Mikey, thank you so much for that. It's... um. I was watching everyone and there's definitely been some breakthroughs in there. And I honestly think that was actually one of your best explanations of that. I think I really enjoyed that call. And now, even guys, if not guys bring it next week. Yeah. Bring it next week. That's what this is for. Yeah. Take advantage of this time. Don't think that you're, I, if you, if you think that you're bothering other people, then we need to just get on a one-on-one. -on -one. Like, I don't, I don't care what we need to do. That's the point. I, I don't know how to emphasize or stress that enough. Like, yeah. this is the point to where we bring that conversation, bring that frustration, bring those questions. Like, I do not understand. Great, then say it. By not saying it is only going to be a detriment to you. So- I, you know, and I'm not saying that anybody in here is, but please, that's what these are for. I love you guys for real. I want, you know, whatever I can do, please. 
And yeah, there's now there's a billion blue wolves. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go sell, sell my fucking bullion that I just bought today. <laughs> okay, guys, to wrap this up, all right. The 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 way you're gonna get the best results in trading is to show up to the call, right? It's to do the work, it's to ask questions, it's to drop the ego, stop pretending if you know, it's okay if you don't know. We would much rather, something's really funny with Ant and Caleb and I want to know because they live together. So that's funny. Um, <laughs> I want you guys to ask questions. I don't want you guys pretending to know something if you don't know it. What, that makes Mike and my job completely pointless. Okay, completely pointless. We're here to help you. We're here to serve you. We're here to get you where you want to be. Okay, let yourself be a beginner. Let yourself be bad at something. Let yourself not know something and don't you know, condemn yourself or call yourself silly for not knowing that way, when you get that out of the way, that is then how you can become really great at this. Okay. Everyone was once a beginner. I want you guys to start speaking up some more. Okay. Closed mouths don't get fed. We're not mind readers. We don't know what you don't know. We don't know what you don't understand unless you say, Mike, I don't get it. SJ, I don't get it. Jenna, I don't get it. Okay. Have fun with this and get involved with the community. Okay, we want you guys to share your wins like in the Trade House Aussie Discord. You guys are being fucking phenomenal. Like it's been so good. Share your wins, share your breakthroughs, share your hard times. We want all of you. Okay, I don't want to know just how many pips you caught. I want to know on the trade you got stopped out on and what you learned from, right? We want all of you to be showing up as much as you can. Now, guys, that is it for tonight. This recording, yes, Mitch, will be up. I will upload it tomorrow. It'll be in the Discord. It'll be on the YouTube if you're not in my Discord. Um, just SJ Plumpton, it'll be the next one. I'll do that in the morning. Um, and I'll, I'll label it the grid. So if you're wondering what it's called, it'll be called that. Epic guys, Mike, thank you so much. I'm so glad you're feeling better. And next week, we'll do some more of this. Yep, for sure. Awesome. Bring those questions, guys. Have I just don't think it's not just ego. Don't think that you're bothering other people. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do that. Yes, fuck that. Do that. That's the point. Yeah, 100%. Guys, um, you know, Vicky's had a one-on-one -on -one with Mike. If you want a one-on-one -on -one with Mike, message me. I'll line it up. If you message yep. Mike, he probably won't reply because his Instagram's bullshit. <laughs> He's got like a thousand unread messages. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> just message Instagram me. Instagram is honestly the worst place. Yeah, just message me and I'll get it happening for you. Also, shout out to Leon Davies, who's on here, who's consistently on here. Guys, if you see another go live educator on a call and you're not on a I call, I didn't even know what's good. Question Leon. yourself. <laughs> question yourself. Maybe after we're done with these quarters, quarter theory grid calls, we'll get um a QA on with Mike, Leon, and myself happening because we've been wanting to do that. We've been wanting to do that for a while as well. So, guys, thank you for tonight. Have a good day, Mike, and all the Americanos and South Africans. And <laughs> I'm going to go to bed. Have a good night, guys. Love you guys. Love you guys. Bye.